why I ultimately ele- uh, elected to stay here in Salt Lake because I had three job opportunities in other markets that I looked at, that I looked at really seriously. And it, it really came down to this opportunity here in Salt Lake and another job in a much bigger market. And it, it, I, w- I won't say better, okay, because bigger markets don't equate to better markets, believe me. And after having a seven-month experience where I had to commute to West Hollywood every day for work, I'm telling you, all you people out there that want L.A. on your bucket list, take it off. Scratch it. I promise you. Now, look, the restaurants are nice. Who doesn't love Manhattan Beach? Who doesn't love, you know, the ocean, all that? And the weather is what it is. But, look, I'm just, I'm just saying, bigger markets don't equate to better jobs in this industry, certainly. Okay? Um, but I, I, I really thought, you know, when, when things went down, and, look, I, I, I think not acknowledging certain things is going to be a little bit disingenuous. And I'm not like that, okay? Because one of the things... And I will, uh, you know, you know I, I, I will just admit this right off the bat. And if you're new to me, if you haven't consumed my show before, you'll learn this about me. I think one of the things that really sets me apart a little bit, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant, I'm just trying to tell the truth, is I'm kind of not afraid to read my diary on air. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not afraid to, like, let you guys know what's going on with me. I, I try to keep it pretty real. I'm a pretty authentic, honest guy. And so ignoring certain things... It's counterintuitive to me to kind of who I am as a person. So not acknowledging, you know, the, the way things went down for me, I think is a little bit disingenuous. And so I'm not going to hide from it. And, I, and look, I understand that a lot of you were really mad at me for a long, long time, man. And I really understand that a lot of you probably still are. Okay. And if you've made your mind up as to who I am, and if you've, if you've made your mind up as to why I'm still behind a microphone, there's not a lot that I can say to you to change your mind. I know what you guys say about me. I know, you know, uh, I, I know the way you talk about how I was raised and who my father is and Silver Spoons this and that and, and then everything that has happened in my path and, and in my life. I know what you guys say, okay? And if you have already made your mind up that if not for my father, I wouldn't be in front of this microphone, there's nothing I, I can say to you to change your mind. Nothing, okay? Because I can bark all I want about really the reality about how I was raised, but you're not going to believe me. My friends and family know, and that's all that matters to me. So all I'm asking, okay, if you think I'm a spoiled, petulant child that has no business having this job, or if you think I have wasted all of my opportunities, here's all I'm asking, okay? All I'm asking is a chance, okay? I can say I'm sorry till I'm blue in the face, and believe me, I am, and I have been. And you can read the article that Jody Genesee wrote in the Deseret News. You can listen to my first podcast. I have been apologetic because I truly am. It's a horrible, horrible situation, okay? And I'm trying to make the best of it every single day. All I do is wake up and say to myself, do the next right thing. I want you to, I want you to listen to that again. Just wake up and say to yourself, do the next right thing. And that's all I do. That's all I do every day. And it's all I do to try and rebuild and I'm thrilled that it's led to a, a situation where I have another opportunity in this business. I approach this opportunity with great humility and great eagerness and excitement. Um, again, I saw a world, my world, for a long, long time that I didn't think this was going to be a part of my life anymore. And it was a little bit scary and a little bit sad, you know, that I, that, that, that I knew that I was the one that had essentially ruin these opportunities and to have another opportunity i'm not going to let it slide i'm not going to let it slip i'm going to take advantage of every moment of it i'm going to do the best i can to show you even the people because look i'm not a big social media guy anymore i used to be back when twitter first launched and instagram first launched i thought it was a really cool way to share content with people i thought it was a really cool way to 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 um interact with listeners and exchange ideas and about two or three years in, it took a real hard left-hand turn, and it just became a cesspool. The internet is where cowards go to feel brave, okay? So I don't necessarily do all that anymore as far as, like, over-the-top interaction. I'll tell you, what we're, you know, what's going on during the show. I'll tweet live during RSL, Utah football, jazz hoops, and, and things like that. But, look, I, again, I, I, I know what a lot of you think of me, and I know what a lot of you have, have shared with me as far as your opinions go, and I understand that. Everybody has a right to their opinion, and some of those opi- opinions are very valid. Some of them are completely off base. All I'm asking from you, okay, is simply a chance in this space to show you what I can do and what I can be and, and hopefully keep you company for a few hours on your ride home and maybe bring a smile to your face and maybe – Who knows? Maybe things aren't great at home right now and you need a little bit of a respite. You need a little bit of an escape. Maybe things at work aren't awesome. Boss is driving you crazy and you need to hop in your car and just take a drive. 
leave it here. I'll keep you company, man. I will keep you company. We'll, we'll, we'll help you through life. We'll talk some sports. We'll have some fun, hopefully bring a smile to your face. We'll try and entertain, engage, and inform. Because the, my favorite part of this job is when I run into somebody on the street or I get an email or I get a direct message or something, and I've been able to provide a bit of a respite for you from a life that maybe right now isn't all that awesome. Because we all go through peaks and valleys. We all have great times and bad times. It's part of life, man. It's just part of the journey. And it's beautiful. Really, the journey is beautiful. The goods and the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, it's all good. It's all beautiful, man. I'm telling you. But there are times where you just need a bit of an escape. You just need a bit of a respite. You want to hear about what's going on with Utah. You want to talk some jazz hoops. You want to talk some NBA hoops. You want to smile. You want to enjoy. You want to have some fun. You want to find some happiness. If I can do that for you for a few hours every day in the afternoon, then I've done my job. Utah is my home, okay? I was born here. Uh, I grew up here until I was 11. We moved back east. I was heartbroken. I couldn't wait to come back. I enjoyed my time back east. Most of my family is still there. I enjoyed my time going into Manhattan and New York and going to Nick games and watching the Yankees and the Giants and the Jets, and I enjoyed that experience and watching the Rangers lift the Stanley Cup in 94 for the first time in decades and decades and decades. Knowing what that feels like makes me even more excited for the possibility and potential of the Jazz winning a championship. Because I'm telling you, the Jazz are going to be all sorts of good this year. Not just a uh, playoff team, border playoff team, maybe win around, but maybe go win the whole damn thing. The Clips have something to say about that, certainly, and so do the Lakers, and I think probably the Sixers do too. But I, I loved my time back east, but I couldn't wait to come back here. I was a child of the Utah Jazz. We moved here in 83 when I was five. I watched Frank draft. I watched Frank Layden and, and, uh, and Scotty Layden draft John Stockton and Carl Malone. I watched in 1984 when Frank won coach and executive of the year. I watched in 1987 when the Jazz took the Lakers to seven games and nearly beat Magic and Kareem. I watched when Frank said, that's enough. I'm tired. No more. And Jerry took the reins and took the Jazz, not, you know, took the Jazz from decent, cute little story to Western Conference contender. I was a PR intern in 1998 when Michael Jordan crossed over Brian Russell. And you could say pushed off if you'd like. Different conversation for a different day. And knocked down that 16-foot dagger jump shot to take a ring off of John and Carl's fingers. I, remember, I was there on draft night praying that they were going to draft Chris Paul. Watched them draft Darren Williams. Signed Carlos Boozer, Memo O'Kerr. I watched that era of jazz hoops. Obviously, Gordon Hayward. I was there when it all, all came crumbling down. And I cried when Jerry Sloan retired. Like a baby. Watching Jerry Sloan's press conference made me cry like I was a six-year-old kid who had a blow pop taken away. I was there when Gordon Hayward decided he was going to Boston. I had that story first. You know, my history with that story is well documented. I was the first person to interview Donovan Mitchell after he was drafted and Quinn Snyder after he was hired. Okay, I am a child of Utah Jazz. I went to BYU basketball camp growing up. I went to the University of Utah for school. I was there courtside as Rick Majerus led his teams after deep run after deep run. I was there when Ronnie Mack got it all started. I was a season ticket holder when Urban Meyer burst onto the scene and, and did something that we didn't think possible with this program. Morgan Scally is a friend of mine and a fraternity brother of mine. I was the first person, along with Riles, to interview Kyle Whittingham after the Pac-12 announcement. I was there in 2009 when Utah won the Sugar Bowl. I was there in 2004 when Utah won the Fiesta Bowl. Utah football means a lot to me. Utah basketball means something to me. I care about my school. I want to see them do well. All five of my siblings went to BYU. My parents went to BYU. I care about BYU. I want to see them do well. When both schools are good, it's better for this business, and it's better for the fan bases. In 2004, my father called me and said, hey, I'm in town. Let's go to lunch. And so as we were grabbing a bite, he looks at me and says, hey, I'm going to bring a soccer team to Salt Lake. I said, you're nuts. Why would you do that? That's a horrible, horrible idea. Soccer doesn't work here. Okay, being raised as the... You know, I played football, basketball, lacrosse, baseball growing up. I didn't. I quit playing soccer when I was 10. So my whole walking line was the same American walking line that you hear when most people talk about soccer because you don't understand it, and that is soccer doesn't work here. Well, he was wrong. Or excuse me, I was wrong, and he was right, and thank God, because even though my father is no longer with RSL, as we needed a local owner with a lot of cash, and Deloitte was the perfect guy for that, every time I drive by, by that stadium, I feel a tremendous amount of pride. I remember when we signed Jason Christ. I remember Jason was our first player. 
Jason scored our first goal in Los Angeles. I remember our first win, and in the early days, wins were few and far between. I remember our first loss. There were a lot of losses. I remember our first draw. I remember our first playoff appearance. Then I remember MLS Cup in 2009 and watching Kyle Beckerman as the captain raise that trophy, surrounded by his teammates, was just a surreal experience. Why am I telling you all of this? You're probably asking yourself, unless you kind of are understanding what I'm saying here. Utah is my home. Utah sports have been a part of my entire life. My entire life. My earliest memories are BYU football. When I was like two or three and my mom was giving me a bath and I would cry because the soap was in my eyes, she would sing, rise and shout to get me to calm down. My father played basketball for BYU. Like, I have, my grandfather was a member of the Cougar Club. We grew up growing up going to play or going to watch BYU football games, BYU basketball games. The Angels are great family friends. I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for BYU. The reason I'm telling you all this is I'm trying to outline that Utah sports, truly, from the day I was born, has been a part of every day of my life to this day. Okay? And so as I thought about taking other jobs, as I thought about moving, every time I inched closer and closer and closer, my heart hurt just a little bit more and a little bit more. Okay? I'm engaged to an incredible girl. Her family is from Utah. They're from up north in Fruit Heights. They're big BYU fans. Utah's her home. I raised my son here. He's about to turn 18 in a week, and he's about to serve a mission. I raised him here. And I have family ties here that, that are just undeniable. I love the state. I love Salt Lake. I love the outdoors. Just this weekend, I was up in the mountains with my friends. Like idiots, we decided to float the Provo River, and I feel like I was in a bar fight. I've got bruises left and right. Played a little golf up at Red Ledges in Heber. It was spectacular. And today, it's like 82 degrees and clear on Monday afternoon in mid-August. It is just another reminder of why this place is so special to me and why all of you, my listeners, have day one have been special to me as well. And I'm thrilled to be back. I'm thrilled to be back in this space where it all started, ESPN 700, to break things down every afternoon and keep you company.